Somebody did. Thank you. And hold on just a second. Why is that not? <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. So welcome to the April 13th uh, DEI working group meeting. So if you could add yourself and also your favorite childhood book. If you could think about that. I'm just I'm just glad I nailed Frog and Toad before anybody else got to it. Okay, for two people that have the same. <laughs> Ender's game is like the dark side of Frog and Toad. I, said, I, just, didn't, I just didn't see it coming, that's all. Yeah, I read those books when I was a kid too, and those are, for you, at least a young adult, somewhere in there, like high school, college, but it was... Uh, those are some those are some very dystopian books. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little disturbing, right? At the yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, it's great to have you here. Um, the first thing I think we'd like to do is would anybody like to facilitate mm -hmm. next week our DEI call? It's about kind of putting together the agenda and doing what I'm doing here, just kind of talking us through that agenda. I'll well. be in the I'll be uh, trip, so I won't be able to do it next week, but I could take the week after that if you want okay. to send me up in advance. See, Precious is volunteering. <clears throat> okay, great. Precious, there's a guide that I'll drop in the link of how to how to facilitate a meeting. All right, thank you, Precious. Thank you, Sean. Yes, it is totally fine. All right, well, welcome. Um, maybe we could start with some mentorship updates. Uh, we could start with, with SheCode Africa. <clears throat> you wanna give us an update there? Elizabeth Barron. Sorry. <laughs> There's so many Elizabeths here. I can't, I can't handle it. Um, yeah, uh, Ruth can also jump in as well. But um, yeah, we met our two mentees. They're awesome. Um, we're just now sorting out the timeline of when tasks should be completed so that we can make sure that we're on track for the rest of the, the um, project. And what else? What else, Ruth? Yeah, I think that's all. We're excited to have them. Awesome. So it sounds like that's just kind of it's running. <clears throat> it's kind of in progress. So that's that's great. Um, it'll be cool to get uh, updates here and I think in the community call, just like the work that's being done too. once that kind of officially um, or not officially, but once it kind of gets rolling. Um, outreachy, uh, we continue to have a, a lot of interest in outreachy. If you follow the Slack channels, um, it would be great if you could kind of, if people are posting in newcomers or uh, general, if you could point them to the Outreachy channel. And the description in the Outreachy channel should actually point to those issues, Sean, that you and I had put together mm -hmm. for kind of expressing interest. So maybe mention that as well. We're all kind of watching the channels, but that would be great. Uh, Ruth, <clears throat> you have a question? Yeah, I, I just want to add, since you just mentioned Outreach, if anyone has like any thoughts of like the bot commands that we're going to use, um, Outreach is something we thought about, um, you know, if someone mentions Outreach, you know, on the channel, the bots can, you know, bring up resources or bring up that uh, message Matt always posts in the channel. So, yeah, so if anyone thinks about anything that the bots, that the mentees from Chicago Africa, can add on, you can, you know, put it up in the Shikoda Africa channel, or I think we can get a doc where you can put up those ideas, but for now you can put it up in the Slack channel. Thank you. So the idea would be <coughs> maybe put something in the description of the channel that would say like, if you're new here, you know, type whatever, some, some sort of hashtag or some sort of tag that would give them resources. Yeah, or if their yeah, message <coughs> mentions anything related to outreachy, it 
the bot automatically brings. You know. Okay. Anything, any idea would, you have. Okay. It would send them a DM though. It would not like m make the channel noisier. I think that was a okay. little bit of your concern too, Matt. Yeah. As long as it's a DM, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Really yeah, that's stressful. <laughs> we don't think we'd have 130. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like reposts of the <laughs> of the info <laughs> yeah. um all right and then google summer of code um it seems to be going along pretty well um, we're we're nearing the deadline for that yeah and today um i had some office hours for it and i posted in slack as well that if you some students want their proposals like some feedback from us before they submit and i, I just said that they needed to follow our process um to add themselves okay. to the grid and a draft of their proposal by the 16th okay any time on earth so that we have time to give them feedback before the 19th deadline okay because <laughs> um, i'll be traveling on the 17th so all right. i just wanted to make sure that i would have them so that i could get them feedback by the 18th at the yeah those time. are those are something you really do have to watch just because yep. they're so auger centric yep or yep. more lab centric okay yeah, I've been handling, I've been fielding questions for both. <laughs> Do you know how many people you have in the spreadsheet or the that table right now? There's only three in the table right now. Okay. But I am, there's a lot more conversations happening. And historically, these, they appear, all of the applications appear in the last two days historically. Okay. So we're ahead of where we ordinarily are. Okay. Um, I, I had just for folks, I had been seeing on the, the kind of the mentorship uh email thread that google runs you know what i'm talking mm -hmm. about yeah like, a lot of people are saying that participation seems low in google summer of code this year yeah i i i i think actually this is a place where we maybe have something of a distinct a distinction mm -hmm. from a lot of open source insofar as our community is very strong mm -hmm. and our students are getting our attention i think there's like I'm noticing a general malaise in in students around the world right now. Like there's definitely some psychological effects yeah, that sure. are happening because of the pandemic. And yep. so I'm, I'm noticing a different kind of engagement, but they, the students actually seem like more engaged with us during this process than I remember historically. Okay. But I, I could, my memory could be shot by COVID. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, that. All oh, that sounds good. All of these, I think we've gotten. Whether it's she code Africa in progress right now, Outreachy and Google Summer of Code Canada, I think mean, we've gotten it kind of straightened out yep. during a sometimes <laughs> choppy period. Thank you, Matt, for straightening uh, that out. <laughs> it's all good. Um, this was I had looked down in some of the prior weeks. There was this document here, and I. I don't totally remember <coughs> this document. So, mentorship best practices. It's a great document. I mean, it's just talking about. Just was Christie's. Yeah. So basically, the idea of this document, as we have previously discussed, was to put together some of the best practices for the uh, for the internships that we um, have at the Chaos Community. And maybe like to help the mentors or the people that uh, will be mentees on how they can, what are the responsibilities, how they can contribute, uh, what are the metrics, how do we see if uh, contribution has been successful, or how do we see if um, if the mentee has reached, you know, a successful, um, has had a successful uh, mentorship, let's say. And these are like some of um, some of the main uh, points topics. Some of the parts here, uh, like for example, the responsibilities to your organization and the responsibilities to to GSOC students. I have uh, extract them from the website of the GSOC uh, uh, and the <clears throat> health and sustainability mentoring metrics and uh, some other uh criteria for example on choosing the winning students and so on i have collected them by some researches that i've done online and some thoughts of mine um and we can definitely work on it um we can definitely brainstorm make it a bigger document or 
we can delete or add to other stuff that we want. But basically, this is like the general idea on uh, how I understood the um, mentorship best practices. Cool. I like this. Um, did, was there a thought on what to do with this document? I, I mean, I like the content. And I love this. It looks like it's kind of in progress. Was there a direction <laughs> that this was going to go? Like something you would share with potential mentors? Um, yeah. Uh, so from what I remember from the conversation that we had like uh, two weeks or three weeks ago, we're thinking if we can add it to the handbook guideline, I think. Okay. Um, but I guess that it needs some more, more work to be like more structured and more okay. shaped in order to get there. And maybe we can definitely share it with the uh, future mentors and future mentees and can probably help them. Uh, you know, the community, it would be when we're creating and running these mentorship programs, I find that we're in the community repo a lot. That's where we tend to put things mm -hmm. and it would, I, I would love to see this just as a public facing markdown in the community repo, which also makes me think that the community repos probably got enough mentorship program stuff in its root that we should create a subfolder for mentorship. <laughs> it's already a, it's already okay. an issue. Oh, is it? <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, way to go, Matt. I'm sure that's your oh, issue. <laughs> it, it wasn't me. It was Venu. Oh, really? Okay. Yep. And we're waiting for these, we're waiting for the programs to kind of. Yep be done or at least okay. be in progress and then we'll move all the folders yeah i did a i did a snapshot release i did a snapshot release of that repo today just to be able to go back and look at all the current state because i think we do have things pretty well developed right now and organized so okay. when we move it i want to be able to remember okay um i mean i'm wondering if it's something for potential mentors that you know as we reach out We've always been fairly informal as to how we reach out to potential mentors yeah. or um, uh, whatever the program might be. And maybe it's something that when we reach out, we also just include a link to. It's, don't forget, yeah. here are your responsibilities. Well, one of the, I mean, what I like about this is it's uh, kind of a one-stop checklist to sort of, about, you know, self evaluate yourself as a mentor like or you know are there like when i take a trip with my family this summer inform when there's an issue with me okay i should tell them hey um i'll be out of town with less access during this week <clears throat> oh that makes sense which, which i do anyway but it's like it's just nice to have these little reminders because yep. we're all busy doing so many things and that's actually an article that we had talked about writing is for those who are kind of those cornerstone pieces of different puzzles, what happens when you're gone? Like, how do you notify the community? Is it through Slack? Is it through GitHub? So that is actually something I think that we need to, to solidify and, and like kind of enforce that practice. Yeah. Um, and that also kind of goes along with the conversation we were having about like sustainable leadership of like, okay, so if one person's out, like the whole thing doesn't fall apart. You know what I mean? So, um, that's, I, I'm glad to see this kind of integrating in with that idea. Cool. Yeah, because right now, like, I just kind of ping you if I'm gone. You know, it's kind of an informal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Christy, could I ask you to do one thing on this? Could you add the link <laughs> to the, unless it's down here. Is this the guide where you got the um, info? I need to check it. Uh, but no, it's actually this is for the season of dogs. I will find the one that's for oh, okay. the code. Um, yeah. And, and then if, could you yeah. also, could you just add that like whatever right here or something? Sure. And then do you know if um, Outreachy or She Code Africa have similar? <clears throat> um, I looked at the Outreachy, but they don't have anything similar. I mean, they don't have information on uh, for the mentors and so on, like this type of stuff. Um, but uh, we can do like a brainstorming and if there are points, other points that you'd like to see in this document, I can keep working on it and add more things. And maybe mm -hmm. in one meeting, we can do like a hands-on for like 10 minutes and we can That'd just finish it and probably, yep. yeah. Why don't we put that on the agenda for next week? Are you gonna be here right. next week, Christy? Yes. Okay. Yes, I'll be here. So why don't we maybe next week, 
take 10 or 15 minutes as a group to work on this. That always seems to be super productive <laughs> when we all work together. Um, so let's do that. Perfect. So I'm just going to add this. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. All right, cool. Um, any other comments on somebody add? We added this to the issue, future knowledge base articles. It's just a placeholder for like the articles that we want to add into the knowledge base that we okay. can't add to the community handbook <laughs> yet. So, okay. so we don't forget about it or get it lost somewhere. Gotcha. Okay, cool. All right. Um, moving on. Any other comments or questions on um, mentorship things that we're doing? All right, great. Um, oh, nah, never mind. Doesn't matter. Um, so, one of the things to bring to the DEI working group is yesterday in the community call, we talked about kind of not putting a full freeze on metrics, a metrics release or new metrics to be released for the next cycle, you know, so like um, whatever that probably around OSS EU, you know, like in October or something like that, but yeah. instead really focus on, really focus on um, reworking or revisiting our current set of metrics that we have released. So like if I was to look at the spreadsheet and the spreadsheet link, is I think it's available at the top here. So metrics tracking sheet, you can click on that, or you can click on the minutes. Um, so all of the greens are the ones that we have released. Event accessibility will be released here shortly, so that'll be green, um, and so on and so forth. And we have a lot of other metrics that we are considering or we have in progress. And the thought was was to not necessarily continue to push forward, say. Um, travel support for speakers or alternatives, whatever these considering metrics are, but really come back to the set of green metrics and take a look at the content that we have in there, take a look at the formatting that we have in there, and make sure that um, we have all of the data and privacy ethics or um, privacy and ethics statements, which we should, but you know, just kind of making sure all of the metrics are, are looking good. Um, in the way they should. So we have started with a few of these. So for example, code of conduct at an event, we have started reviewing, but it would just be the next four months would really be focusing on, on those kinds of things. Um, so I, do, do people have questions on, on that? That if we have anything pressing, we can move forward on it, but otherwise we focus on revisiting our, our older metrics. Any questions or comments on that? All right, um, so I should probably, I'm going to move this up. So one of the things that came up was, somebody's writing something tangential. One of the things that came up was how do we kind of do that process? So we have, um, we have the original issue associated with a metric. So any of these metrics that we released, we had an original issue where we went through a checklist of things um, as part of the release process. And um, we, we, could, we could reopen that issue and talk within that issue about things that we are changing for a review, or we could open a new issue around revisiting a metric. Those are our, kind of our two like issue choices. So do people have thoughts on that? Kind of which direction to go? Elizabeth, I know you reopened the old issue in evolution. And I also did the same in like for this one. 
My only, my only concern is that when we reopen it, it doesn't push it to the top of the list. Mm -hmm. So it's like buried. So if there are other issues, it's like it'll be at the bottom because it's old. Right. But otherwise, I think it makes sense to keep this, this thread together unless we want to do a new, like you said, a new issue and then just tag or, or mention so it's connected through a link. But yeah. Would we, my other concern is that reopening the old issue, you saw I kind of at this point had renamed this. Like sometimes the titles are a little funny. Like they don't really give an indication that this is being reviewed currently. Yeah, we just rely on the label. That's it. And, but yeah. And the top, yeah, and the top, all the top stuff is kind of about like you have to go down pretty far into the issue to get yeah. to, the, to the review part of it. That's my only, that's another, it's kind of is related to your concern that it's like at the bottom of the list. And then within the issue, that, that conversation is at the bottom of the issue. Do other people have thoughts on this? Open old issue. Reopen old issue versus a new issue. Looking for feedback. I, I mean, I think to Elizabeth's point, I mean, opening a new issue does bring it to the top and keep it from getting buried. What? Okay. I'm 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 personally inclined for opening a new issue and we could link to the old closed issue. Yeah, I agree with that. So <clears throat> yeah, that I'm I'm yeah fine with that too. I'll just have to go back and redo the, <laughs> the evolution one. So there's gonna be some uh, in that repo, sorry. <laughs> This is how we learn. <laughs> okay, well, so let's open new issues with a link to the old original closed issue. Then so would I, we have the new um, checklist in those then? Like just yeah. read? Okay. So then I had started to put together, I had pulled it from the older like kind of the the original checklist, but I changed it a little bit just because it's about revisiting. And so like just adding a revisiting metric label, you know, like create an issue that has a revisiting metric. Um, create a pull request to edit metric. Oh, I, I need to type that, but um, create a pull request oh, to edit metric in the <clears throat> original repo. So once we're happy with the edits, we'll create a pull request against the original metric. Um, you know, we do need to update the spreadsheet. We'd need to do the translation stuff. And then we would really um, also label it when it's ready as a candidate release, because it's it's got to be part of that release process. Um, I, I wanted to say this a little differently. I, I was kind of doing this right at the last minute here, but like this, this announcement, I think we don't have to announce because we don't do it anyway, metric by metric that we have a new metric, <laughs> but there is, I think, an announcement that you make, Elizabeth, you know, that's a collective of all edited metrics, <laughs> like, hey, we have yeah. all of these things. So I think that's okay, as long as we can communicate it to you somehow or we have it tracked i mean it would all be tracked in here anyway but just some announcement and then from a content quality perspective i was kind of looking at my notes and this is where i think we would um remember when we were talking about like the stuff you were doing elizabeth for the evolution what i was doing with dei i was trying to think about how we signal what has actually been changed in the metric because we can obviously see it with like a just the difference between the old one and the new one. I mean, we can we can see what has actually been changed, but we might want to. There are a few things that we might want to check here. So making sure that we add date of last review. I was thinking just month and year would be okay. Um, that there were formatting changes that were made. Like you know, like we just did formatting on this. It was not a substantial thing or we did formatting and major editorial changes, <laughs> something along those yeah, lines. Yeah, I think, I think that would be helpful to just have an idea uh, instead of having to dig through the PRs to see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that would be helpful. Because like, if you just had like that, 
you'd be like, okay, it's it's the same metric. <laughs> they probably just had fixed some typos mm -hmm. and some spacing was probably a little bit off. But if you have something like that, to me, that would signal a kind of a content change in the metric. You might want to look through the changes a little bit more in more detail. What do other people think about kind of this content quality checklist? I think it's helpful. Okay. I mean, I think I think it um, <clears throat> it make it, it let, lets the person who's then going to act on it know where to focus or you know how much to rethink it. Okay. I especially like the major minor designations. Okay. Um, this one I was a little the last one metric name has changed. So I, I don't know how much <coughs> that to go into that. So like if a name changes, we need to change it in that table in the readme table. Like there are a few places we need to kind of make sure that change is cascaded through. Yeah, I know this has been a big issue for evolution because they did, there was some reluctance to use the word commit to mm -hmm. identify commits early on. We call mm -hmm. them code changes, but then people came here looking for commits and couldn't find them. So we added commits back into the name. Okay. Um, <laughs> But I don't see it. I don't see a lot of metric names changing. I think it's a uh, but knowing where we need to go to fix it and we change them would be helpful. Okay, maybe I'll I'll try to. Yeah, I don't see a lot changing either. But it is possible <laughs> that um, that one has changed. Okay, sounds good. I'll kind of update that a little bit, and we can bring this to the to the um, community call too. And then the technical requirements for any edits, it's kind of the same as the list we had on the original. OK, so everybody kind of good with this? A few tweaks, I'll go back through it again. So we'd open a new issue for a revisit, put this at the top, this whole thing, but put this at the top of the new issue and linking to the old issue. And then we can have the conversation there. Does that work? Right on. OK. Okay. All right. Uh, great. Any other questions or comments on kind of the release cycle and the expectation of the working groups and kind of how we can proceed? All right. Um, I, wait, I had one more question too. So, um, Actually, maybe it's not that big of a question. So if I'm in here and I just wanna, so like Elizabeth, I didn't, I haven't looked at your evolution issues, but I'm guessing it, is it just kind of a list of things that you think need to be done? List is stretching it. Okay. <laughs> it's more of like my observations, generally speaking, like, okay. yeah, I see this generally, I see that. Um, so the group needs to just look at this. So I did not like enumerate by any stretch. Okay. I didn't go that deep. Okay, so I think the the issue would include probably the quality checklist plus your that commentary that you're talking about, and then evolution can pick it up from there. It basically was like a justification of why I think this needs to be reviewed. Okay. So just so for you know whoever. Okay. All right, that sounds good. And then the working group would actually go through the checklist. Like you don't do that. You would. Right. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. So then just so everybody knows, we have people designated to kind of go through each of the different working groups, all of the green things. So like Elizabeth is going through the greens that are in evolution. I'm going through the greens that are in DEI. I think Venya is going through risk, maybe. Anyway, we have um, a few people going through different. Kevin, I think maybe is going through common, just to kind of highlight a few things. So hopefully, I think Kevin's on here today. So we have four of the five folks who are going through the different working groups. So hopefully that makes sense. All right. Um, project badging updates we uh, issued a new badge recently or two 
Well, yeah. So let's event badging updates. Let's just say, like, give ourselves a huge round of applause because I think we just badged our over 50th, 51st. Yeah, I just added that. Oh, where'd you add it? Right under review. Oh, there you go. Okay. Well, that's. I was, yeah, there's another quick update I wanted to put on here, too. That's huge. So. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I made it big because <laughs> it was it's awesome. I mean, 50 badges. This program is obviously <coughs> working quite well. And I think we have several under review at the moment. So um, great job. Uh, do you want to talk about event badging? I mean, while we're here, we can just go right to that. Sure. So there's just two other things besides that big yay. Quickly, um, just want to give a shout out to Kafaya, who has been really instrumental in helping keep um, those new applications coming in, flowing and um, uh, assigning reviewers, essentially assigning reviewers and um, kind of keeping track of them and pinging to make sure that, you know, they have what they need and just kind of making that smooth. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Kafaya for helping out with that. And then the other update is about our reviewer appreciation event, which is um, June 16th. And Katie has been the one that's really uh, organizing that and putting that together. We encourage everybody <coughs> to register for that. And you can do that at this link. It's free event, obviously it's virtual, um, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. US Central Chicago time. Um, and, and you'll see the, the point of the event is really just to recognize um, our reviewing team and just to bring everybody together to celebrate. So um, that 50 badges is kind of a nice milestone. It's also, uh, I think, technically two years old, Matt said. So um, yeah, it, it'll be a great event. Then they're currently working on a little agenda and just like a plan for that hour. So yeah. Awesome. And I, I would say too, looking at some of the uh, applications that have, that are coming in, they're um, like, it's really interesting because there's this really nice alignment now between the metrics and how the applications come in. Like we, it's, it's doing a lot of what I think we hoped it would do, like align event organizers with the program, like us and them, and like we come together. <laughs> yeah. Um, to that point, we had, um, an application come through that is at a silver level, which is also awesome because we have been just gold to so far. So it kind of just validates the process. Like, yeah, we're not just handing out, you know, gold badges to everyone. Um, but what was curious is they asked for ways that they could improve, um, even enough, not for this year, but for next time. And so we were able to point them to the actual metrics and say, here's more about this family friendliness idea. Here are some suggestions, here's references too at the bottom that you can follow those links as well. So it was a perfect alignment with what we're trying to do with the metrics and how they can actually implement them in real world and make it better. That's awesome. That's super awesome. Mm -hmm. So thank you everybody, uh, really an amazing program. All right, um, let's see, project, we'll go, we'll just stick with, with, um, Badging. So project badging, we we actually, since our last talk, we had a chance to connect with some folks at GitHub and the all in project around project badging. And uh, they're quite interested in helping move this forward. I don't have a ton of details like on this. I don't know who put that in there. So when will it be launched? Don't know. <laughs> Still a lot of work to do. We were talking about that in the event badging. Okay. There's um there's like that group is also very interested in kind of collaborating on this whole idea of project badging as well. So yeah. There that that group is also interested. Is that what you the said? Event badging. Team. Okay. Yeah, for lack of a better term, but yeah. Okay, that sounds cool. Um, I think to be honest, like Elizabeth and Sean, you were on that call. I think we're still mm -hmm. kind of in the early stages of that. Yeah. The project badging, but it's just nice to to know that there's. And it's nice to hear that the event badging folks are interested as well. There's like a, a, a group of individuals uh, from from GitHub, all in us, that are like interested in, in making this happen. Um, and I think we've been pretty clear too about the complexities of doing this. And, and I think the conversation we had uh, last week and a lot of the ideas that you had brought forward, Katie, were, were really, really kind of inspiring um, in terms of helping move this forward. So thank you for that. Um, more to come, <laughs> how about that? 
but I think it's moving forward positively. Um, cool. Anything else from project badging folks? Or let me know, loop me in if there's any project badging meetings that you want me at. Certainly, 100%. Um, we should probably, I mean, at some point, part of that conversation, I'm thinking, Elizabeth, like when we talk to the folks at all, and we should probably start having meetings like that that are actually open and public. So we, we were thinking in the event badging um, that we would have uh, like one badging time slot and then it, uh, maybe alternate. So like one oh, week we cool. talk about event badging, the next week we yeah. talk about a project. Would that, do you think, be a good way to align yeah i think that's a super good idea because awesome. then we have a weekly cadence for badging and it's like and if the folks in the event badging <laughs> project are interested i mean we just we kind of have a, a working group and that was that was kind of the question that came up is like are, are we working on this in the dei working group or is it a separate working group is it yeah with badging <laughs> just I a generic badging probably group be or? something else it's just because there's a lot going on with event badging. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that project badging is not going to be any any easier. <laughs> no, I yeah, think the, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Sean. Well, I think from the badging meeting, there may or may not be interest in, in that group, to, you know, helping to develop or administer the project badging. So I guess do, do we do you think it's a separate meeting than this and the badging meeting to develop the project badging map? No, no, no. I think it's just it's one badging meeting that meets okay once a week at some time. Okay, so we, okay to Elizabeth's point, we just alternate. Okay, the first and third, to whatever Tuesdays of the month are event badging, and the second yeah. and fourth is you know uh, project badging something along those yeah. lines and if there's a fifth tuesday or whatever then Wednesday, we, or whatever, then there's <laughs> nothing we get that that week off we just all bring our pets <laughs> onto the zoom screen yeah <laughs> compare dogs and cats so i think the only question remains is we just need to find a block of time that's open on the chaos calendar so yes yeah. yeah and that would work for because we definitely need to include folks from all in like github yeah there's a fair amount of coordination work here mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if if um, because like I mean we've we've kind of experienced this in the past that you know the their um, I don't know how to say this their vision changes so quickly like I didn't know if we wanted to kind of get it together first we could uh, and then kind of bring them in yeah, or yeah. okay just because oh, I know like we want it to be more of a chaos thing than yeah. a like a a GitHub or all in thing so. Yeah. I don't know, whatever you think. No, 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 that's that's fair. I mean, we had actually in that meeting, we had talked about branding, if you recall. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of what just retaining chaos in that. So. Yeah. So it might make sense to kind of just have our meetings and, and they're open, you know, they could come if they want, but like yeah. I don't know. No, 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 that makes sense. And then and then as we meet with folks like at all in, we can kind of just bring forward it's almost like talking within the DEI working group like we we just bringing forward updates to this working group I think yeah yeah okay. that would be my okay my... yeah no I'm cool with that um so I'm just looking at some of the people on the call like Justin if you were participating in that how what how many hours ahead are you seven from us what time is it I'm I'm actually back in US Eastern now. So oh, just one hour. One, one hour. Oh, well, ta-da. All right. Uh Ruth, <laughs> are you seven hours ahead? Is it Yeah, I think so. What time is it there right now? It's uh 4 42 p.m. Okay, you're six hours ahead. Okay. Um in Enoch, I don't know what, what time it is where you are. It's six forty-two p.m. Okay. So you're eight hours ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, but just as we, I'm just thinking, Elizabeth, as we kind of coordinate this, I think a lot of these folks have expressed interest. And precious, I don't know where you, how, what time it is for you either. So it sounds like eight hours would be our like, like. Out. <laughs> yeah, early morning central seems to I, I agree. All right, cool. 
Um, so translations, I just wanted to, this is more of an update as well. I just wanted to let you know that we're also working on trying to connect with some external organizations. We're just ex in early stages of exploring this to help with our translations process on the metrics. And so all of the work that we have been doing around the Chinese Mandarin translations, kind of how we can start um, having that work uh, be done in Spanish as well, and perhaps other languages. And I think there, some of the groups that we're talking to work on translations or localization as a, a thing they do. So I think there's a lot we could really learn about doing localization and, and translations. And so that's, I think, early in, early early stages. I don't know if anybody else has any comments on this, but just trying to bring this forward here. All right. Um, I did have one last thing. Does anybody else have anything else on the agenda for today? I did have one last thing. Um, so for the chaos code of conduct, uh, Elizabeth and I were in a meeting uh, yesterday with uh, Joanna Lee, who um, provides a lot of code of conduct support, and I think she does a lot of work with like CNCF and the LF. And one of the one of the things that was recommended is that we don't have two codes of conduct: an event code of conduct and a project code of conduct. That we have one code of conduct that addresses yeah. both both things. So um, the idea being that, like, you know really bad behavior is bad behavior <laughs> and it doesn't matter where it occurs <laughs> but there can be different mechanisms i see justin giving a thumbs up so there can be different mechanisms that need to be followed in an event just because you are in person than online but nonetheless there should nonetheless there shouldn't be two codes of conduct so um does, does anybody else have any thoughts on this justin you gave your thumbs up but Elizabeth, did I miss anything kind of in that? Um, no, um, we uh, also talked about um, enforcement and training. Um, so I think that that's something that we'll probably pursue uh, for the code of conduct committee, just for the record. Um, and not that it's an urgent need, but it's something that we have to just say. So yeah, <laughs> right, 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 yeah. <laughs> This is kind of planning for the future, yes. um, setting the foundation. Um, yeah, we don't have an urgent. Yeah, I think that was it. Okay. Um, so it makes sense. Uh, just one set of instructions to make okay. it easier. Yeah. So maybe I mean, I can kind of take this on as an action item to see what that would look like. Let's see. Could also point if it helps to the recent work with Fedora and the Sustain OS community around code of conduct because they both have uh, gone down that pathway of event and project code of conducts into one. They have. Do they have any of this published or anything? Yep. So Fedora's is about probably a year old now, and Sustain's okay. is like months. Okay. So just just take a look at Fedora and Sustain's. That's what you're telling me. Yeah, I'll put the links in the in the doc for you. Thank you. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you. All right. Anything else that is on people's mind? All good. All right. So let's see. Precious, you're gonna help facilitate next week. Um, I'm happy, and I, I, I'll kind of guess with Elizabeth too, but we're happy to help set agenda. You know, if there's things that you're wondering about what we should be talking about or what might be relevant, um, happy to do that as well. And if you saw Elizabeth put the document to facilitating a chaos meeting in there for you. So, all right. All good. Didn't miss anything in the chat, did I? All right. That was an action-packed meeting. It was. It was. Like there was a lot. There was a lot to that. So yeah. <laughs> so it's gotta be. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, 
take care, take three minutes off from that action packedness. <laughs> you can recover before your, before your next meeting. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Bye. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.